Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today we've got three mail days, three envelopes. Uh, I'm, I'm excited about this. I, I'm, I'm super happy. Um, last week it was my birthday. What happens when it's your birthday? You think, I deserve a present. And I think a lot of Magic the Gathering um, players recognize this. And it's quite dangerous when you're playing old school. So I have bought myself some presents. And yeah, I got out of hand a little bit, especially the card that's in here. Got out of hand a little bit. I'm, you know what? I'm going to save this for last. I can tell you it's a reserve list card. And it's going to go in my new deck. Uh, Dwarven Workshop, which is a deck that's very much still in the making, but also besides that deck, I can use it in a lot of other decks as well. So I'm going to save this for last. Then I've got a, a really nice play set in here, signed, sent to me by Alex. He's a player in our old school Dutch community. Great guy. He's got a beautiful collection of signed cards and he wanted to part with this uh, play set. So I had to uh, take that chance. So thank you, Alex. I'm gonna open this second, but I'm gonna start with this mail day from Italy. It's another mail day from Arcane. And he earlier sent me, um, maybe you remember that if you follow the channel, a play set of Thunder Spirits. And that's the start, well, well, yeah, I guess you could say that's that was the start of my foreign black bordered holiday deck. So a complete deck, white weenie, black bordered uh, foreign edition cards. So there are some cards in here that I want to use in that deck. And um, yeah, I'm going to open it up, going to show you. Let's have a look. Yeah, it's open. There we go. Always kind of checking. That's everything. Is it is there something there? No, that's everything. Okay. How do you like my new post-its, by the way? Pretty cool, right? Got them for my birthday. Um... Let's go, let's try to open this up. Man, that's a lot of tape, people. And a lot of cards, by the way. Look at this, big chunk of cards. The thing with, with these cards that I order, especially the foreign cards, they're usually not too expensive. But um, then the cost is, of course, in the shipping. So when I order these, I make sure I always get kind of like a big bunch of cards. And there's actually a card in here, I'm thinking about it now, that's not gonna go in my white deck, but it's just a card that I don't have in my collection yet, and I decided to get a foreign copy because they're a little bit more, they're just cheaper, so they're a little bit more affordable. Okay, here we go. So we've got this, oh man, more tape. This is difficult. Life is difficult. Oh, wow, it's actually not that difficult. I'm getting better at this. Let me know in the comments if you agree that I am getting better at this. Or am I just, you know, giving myself compliments that make no sense at all? So I guess these cards are like the cover-up cards. Right? Yeah, so I don't know who this dude is, but whatever. And then we've got, oh, here you can already see some of the cards. What is the list? I don't, yeah, whatever, man. I don't care about whatever list. I'm gonna start with these cards. Oh man, this is just, I just love the art of this card. I love the simplicity of this card. Look at it, it's a rare, it's blessing, right? Two white enchant creature, one white plus one plus one, that's it. That's all you need in life. It's very simple and it's a rare. This. this this is what rare cards look like, looked like back in the day. Love the art. Okay, next one. Yes, Cormus Bell. Campana di Cormus. Remember, this doesn't only make your swamps into 1-1 one, one creatures, it makes them uh, into 1-1 one, one black creatures, right? So this is good. And this is actually also a useful sideboard card against black in specific decks. Um, but yeah, I just got it because like I said, ordering these cards, doesn't cost that much, but the shipping costs much. So I always wanna make sure I've got enough in my basket. And then we've got a Karma. So this card, of course, is for my uh, my mono white foreign black border deck. So Karma is gonna punish my opponents for having swamps. One damage per swamp, that's what this baby does. We've got another Karma, another Karma. I think a full play set. And another Karma, yeah. Got a play set. 
And then unholy, sorry, not unholy, holy strength, of course, plus one, plus two. And then in black, you've got the unholy strength with the pentagram. I am thinking about playing this because it's only one white. And remember, in that white deck, I play with four Armageddons. So I'm not going to have a lot of mana. And this card hardly sees any play. I think it's a beautiful card. And it's just cool to play with holy strength, or as the Italians call it, Forza Sacra. Forza Sacra. Right? I mean, I'm so good in Italian. It's amazing. It's amazing. Okay, this is my second. Also a playset, I assume. Yes. A whole playset. I do love the colors. Really, really pops. Very, very pretty. Okay, um, then. Because oh, there's one, there's a black card in here. Probably this one in the sleeve. I, I'm going to leave this for last. Let's turn around and see what the other cards are. So here we've got a Pegasus. Let's zoom in properly. Picasso de la Messe. We've got another Pegasus. Another Pegasus. Also play set. That means I now have too many Mesa Pegasus. Anyway, you can never have too many, by the way. Who cares? Ah, Pikeman. Yeah, I'm actually playing with Pikeman in that deck. I love the fact that Pikeman has banding and first strike. I think that's very useful. There we go, three Pikeman. So I also have a play set of that. And then the card, I recently talked about this card in Forgotten Combos. Bam, Hellfire. Fuoco Infernale. Fuoco means fire. Oh, this is such a good card. Destroys every non-black creature, right? And then you get some damage per creature that you destroy. You know what? I'll, I'll show you the original Legends card here so you can kind of read it. But it is absolutely stunning. Art by Pete Venters. Had to check. Art by Pete Venters. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Let's see. Going to try to zoom in properly for you guys. Love it. Also love this. Like this night. This burned here and this here. It's just beautiful. So much detail, so much happening in this piece of art. I think it's amazing. Absolutely stunning. Just a great card now to own. And this is one of one of the cards that I think, you know, I'd rather have it foreign uh, black border because then it's kind of affordable still. Um, instead of, you know, owning um the english version because that's really really expensive i think it's it's above the 100 euro mark or something it's very expensive so this is still kind of affordable so i'm gonna i'm gonna put it here um i got the cards here so this is the first envelope now i'm gonna dive into the second one so this is an envelope sent to me by alex he's a dutch magic player who collects signed cards and every now and then he sells a couple of signed cards actually almost not almost but 10 of the islands in my Timmy Spellbook deck are actually from Alex, those signed beta islands. So I was able to buy them from him earlier and now there was another possibility. You know, at least I think it is this envelope. You never know. Maybe it's something else. Oh, let's open it up. Wow, it's kind of stuck. We got a traffic jam. Okay, now it's open. Nothing in here anymore. See a bottle. And here we go. Oh, wow, this is something else. Dear Thomas, it was only yesterday that I found out about your birthday. Congrats and many more. In following of Petra, I thought a little fun would be in place. Also know you are making a full foreign language deck. I am. For that, this is also one card in the package. So sorry I was late, but I've noted for next year. Man, you don't have to. No worries, my man. I didn't expect this at all. So that's so kind of you, Savannah Line. You've, uh, you always comment on the videos, which is very much appreciated. Always positive vibes coming from you and from Peter as well. So that's great. Um, wow, unexpected. I'm gonna, let's look at the front. Yeah, at Easter and Yara. So it's somebody's birthday. That's, wow, man, that's, that's really, really appreciate it. I'm gonna have a look. Ooh, there we see a foreign card. Hammerheim, that is a nice one. Again, a card I don't have yet in my foreign collection. Really sweet. So we've got a Hammerheim, a World Bottling Kit. 
Sacrifice World Bottling Kit. Choose a magic set. Remove from the game all permanents with that set's expansion symbol except for basic lands. Wow, that would if that would really exist, like in, as in a regular magic card, this is unglued, that would be kind of sick. Circle of Protection Art. A Circle of Protection Art comes into play, choose an artist. The next time a source of your choice by the chosen artist will deal damage to you this turn, prevent that damage. This would actually be pretty good, and I love... I love the old school art here that's represented on this piece. That is that is beautiful, actually. But if this would really exist in old school art, uh, in the old school, I mean, it would kind of be a good circle of protection because certain artists you see quite a lot. And then we have, of course, the famous Chaos Confetti. Actually, Savannah Line, I'm quite happy with this because I've got a bunch of Chaos Confetti. So that is super cool. So four for the Chaos Confetti, four and tap. Tear Chaos Confetti into pieces. Throw the pieces onto the, onto the playing area from a distance of at least five feet. Destroy each card in play that a piece touches. Remove the pieces from the game afterwards. The cool thing about Chaos Confetti is it's actually based on how people uh, used to use the Chaos Orb, right? They would rip it apart because if it was ripped, they could simply hit more targets with the Chaos Orb. So that is pretty badass. And then as a joke, Kind of an homage to that. They uh, they made this one, the Chaos Confetti. Very, very cool. Can you imagine nowadays, like, tearing actual chaos, uh, uh, chaos Orb into pieces? That would be insane. Okay, so this is a great mail day from Savannah Lion. So thank you. So I guess, Alex, your cards are still coming up. I'm looking forward to that. But Savannah Lion, wow, man. And so nice to get a card. Thank you very much. I'm going to keep this for sure. And then let's stay zoomed in, everybody. This is the envelope. I'm so excited about this card. Let's make some space. Here we go. We've even got two cats on this one. I need my scissors. Scissors. There we go. Feels like I'm cutting through something, but I'm just gonna go through. Gotta do it. I mean, I just don't assume they put the card here, right? Right? Okay. And, okay, this is MT. MT. Mm, oh yeah, good, good. For a moment there, for a moment there, I thought I cut actually through something and that I cut through this magazine, which is, which is fine, it's safe. It's no magic card in here. And here we see the magic card, spoiler alert. You've already seen it, but this card is so awesome. You can do so much fun stuff with this card. I'm going to take it out. I'm going to show it. We're going to discuss it together. It's amazing. First of all, thank you, Leon, for selling it to me for making the trade. Ooh, but now i got to get the tape away. Of course, you've packed it well, my friend, which is important. This card is not cheap. See if I can get this to go. The struggle's real, but now we got it. We've got it. Oh. What a beautiful card. What a beautiful card. Thomas's Coffin. Four for a mono artifact. Three and tap, because that's why it's called a mono artifact. Select a creature in play. That creature is considered out of play as long as Coffin remains tapped. Hence, the creature cannot be the target of spells and cannot receive damage. Use special powers, attack, or defend. All counters, so this is important, especially the counters, all counters and enchantments on the creature remain, but are also out of play. If Coffin is untapped or removed, the creature returns to play tapped. You may choose not to untap Coffin during the untapped phase. So this card works multiple ways. First off, you can use it to defend your creature. Your opponent plays sorts uh, to plowshares on your card in response, three and tap, put it in the Coffin. It's safe, the sorts fizzles. Right? That's one of the ways to use it to protect your creatures. Another way, of course, is to um, you know, take out a creature of your opponent. Simply put the creature of your opponent in the coffin 
and it's out of the game, right? And then when you untap your coffin, this is pretty cool. The creature comes back at the side of your opponent tapped. So if you don't want to attack, they cannot block with that creature. So it's a super versatile card. Obviously, you can also combine this with a Wrath of God effect. Put, you, put your creature in the coffin, play Wrath of God, blow up the board, and then untap your Taunus' coffin next turn, and then you still have a creature on board. Now, of course, this creature does come back tapped, so please keep that in mind. Now, another really cool thing, and I've shown that on the channel before, is that, you know, when you put a Trike or a Tetravis or a Clockwork Avian or whatever creature with counters on it in the box, as soon as you untap your Taunus' coffin and it comes back into play, the counters also that enter the battlefield effects trigger again. So, for example, a Trike comes into play with an additional three plus one plus one counters. So you can start making trikes with multiple arms, you know, which is obviously insane. You know, it's, it, it, it is, it is, it is really crazy. It is really good. And in, in uh, the Dwarven Workshop deck, I currently have one Taunus's Coffin. And I think I should play with two. So when I saw this card coming by, I had to pick it up. I had to text Leon, uh, Leo and I, uh, Leon, sorry, and I had to try to, you know, get 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 the card, and I'm so happy that I that I did. So this is the card that I wanted to show you last because it's just um, yeah, incredibly amaze balls. Yeah, can I say that? Yes, I can say that. Amaze balls. I like I like to say that. It sounds good. Anyway, uh, thank you very much for watching another episode right here on Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic, and see you next time. Ich bin der Sumba-Kazik.